biopsychosocial model in the origins of psychiatry. George Engel's biopsychosocial model was a challenge to biomedical dogmatism. It was based on the systems theory of Paul Weiss and Ludwig von Bertalanffy, or at least this theory was regarded as a suitable conceptual basis for the model. All of this is well known. What is less well known is that Engel's original science paper in 1977 was written in response to a paper published in JAMA by Arnold Ludwig called The Psychiatrist as Physician. Professor Ludwig is still emeritus in the University of Kentucky Medical School and also adjunct professor at Brown University. His publications include two books, The Price of Greatness and King of the Mountain, The Nature of Political Leadership. In his paper, Ludwig was concerned about the state of psychiatry, which he saw as under attack. To quote from him in full, Critics deny the concept of mental illness, question the special expertise of psychiatrists for treating emotional disorders, protest against the practices of involuntary commitment and behaviour modification, cite the failures of the community mental health movement, argue against the expanded role of psychiatrists in social and forensic issues, accuse the profession of not being responsive enough to problems of poverty, minority groups and social inequities, and even dealt the legitimacy of psychiatry as a medical specialty, indicating that its scope encompasses only mental disorders of unknown cause. Ludwig's response to what we might now call anti-psychiatry was to accept that modern-day psychiatry is vulnerable to such charges. His solution was to retreat to the medical model. As far as he was concerned, psychiatry should deal with medical illness, including neuropsychiatric and medico-psychiatric disorders, rather than non-psychiatric problems, which are more appropriately handled by non-medical professionals. Ludwig was clear that psychiatry's viability was dependent on an understanding of mental illness as due to known, suggestive or presumed brain dysfunction. Interestingly, he predicted, I'm not optimistic that there will be any sudden and dramatic resolution of these issues. The subsequent history could be said to have proved him wrong in the sense that psychiatry has become more biomedical since the publication of DSM-3 in 1980. Engel, by contrast, was not happy with Ludwig's proposal for change. As far as he was concerned, all medicine, not just psychiatry, was in crisis. He believed doctors had become insensitive to the personal problems of patients and preoccupied with procedures. In short, medicine is too disease-orientated rather than patient-orientated. For Engel, the biopsychosocial model has real advantages by taking account of cultural, social and psychological considerations as well as biological. Furthermore, it avoids the polarisation between biomedical reductionists, amongst which Engel would have included Ludwig, and exclusionists who deny mental illness like Thomas Sass. Sass, in fact, as the same biomedical understanding as reductionists of the nature of illness as physical lesion, but does not believe in mental illness because a biological basis has not been established. Engel was aware that there had been earlier attempts to provide an integrated perspective and made reference to Sigmund Freud and Adolf Meyer, who had previously provided frames of reference whereby psychological processes could be included in a concept of disease. Meyer introduced psychology into the medical training at Johns Hopkins from 1913. 
he expected medical students to do an in-depth study of an individual, usually themselves, and made use of the life chart. Engel himself was involved in developing a psychosomatic training program at the University of Rochester Medical School for trainee psychiatrists, as well as medical students. Over recent years, patient-centred medicine, particularly as described by the Western Ontario Group, has influenced the development of medical education. It can be seen as the process for implementing the biopsychosocial model in medical training. For example, in the UK, the General Medical Council's report in 1993, called Tomorrow's Doctors, has had a major impact. My own medical school, as an example, has a course that is completely based on problem-based learning, predicated on patient-centred principles, with a focus on communication skills. There may be a question about how much this biopsychosocial approach has really permeated the foundations of medicine, but at least it has had a major effect on medical education theoretically in the way that Engel promoted. What I want to do in this talk is to pick up on Engel's reference to the past by looking at ideas about mental illness from the turn of the 19th century. I'm obviously being necessarily selective in this, but my hope is that such a, an historical perspective may help to make Engel's concept of the biopsychosocial model more intelligible. For example, the dominant understanding of mental illness in the 19th century, as currently, was physicalist. To quote from W.A.F. Brown, who wrote what asylums were, are, and ought to be, in all cases where disorder of the mind is detectable, it must, and can only be traced directly or indirectly to the brain. Brown was influenced by phrenology, and essentially what he meant was that the brain is oppressed by blood, rather than having our own pathological understanding. Nonetheless, he was clear that mental illness is due to a brain disorder. As far as he was concerned, there was evidence for this in brain dissection, and people either did not look hard enough, or the physical effects were general. To quote again, the prevailing opinion at present is that no cases do occur where no pathological condition can be observed, that those recorded owe this feature to the negligence or ignorance of the narrator, and that should such cases really exist, the brain must be affected similarly to the rest of the body in fever, where the alterations are evanescent, disappearing on the extinction of life. Similarly, 200 years ago, John Haslam was clear that insanity is a corporal disease. He argued that the treatment of mental illness should be a medical monopoly. In his words, mental illness is the peculiar and exclusive province of the medical practitioner. Like Brown, even before the development of our modern histological understanding, Haslam regarded the pathological basis of mental illness as obvious in macroscopic terms. Madness has always been connected with diseases of the brain and of its membranes. One of the reasons Haslam took this physicalist view was that it made the philosophy of mind simpler. The various and discordant opinions which have prevailed in this department of knowledge have led me to disentangle myself as quickly as possible from the perplexity of metaphysical mazes. Exposing his essential motivation, he stated, from the limited nature of my powers, I have never been able to conceive a disease of the mind. The physicalist views of Brown and Haslam represented the mainstream understanding of mental illness. Nonetheless, there were more integrated perspectives, and I want to look at two examples. Firstly, Philippe Bunel, 
often seen as the founder of modern psychiatry, saw psychiatry's medical object as lesions of the function of understanding. As far as he was concerned, insanity has a moral cause rooted in ideas and the passions. This did not mean the body was not implicated, as le moral et le physique were seen as interrelated. Pinel was clear that insanity affects the body functionally and is not the result of a true organic lesion. Standing out against Brown, Haslam and many other anatomists, he was aware from his own dissections that insanity does not have a discernible brain lesion. How was Pinel able to come to a different non-physicalist perspective? He spent four years postgraduate study, study at Montpellier and was influenced by vitalist ideas. In vitalist understanding, avoiding any reference to the soul, life was seen as essentially the sensibility of the fibres that constitute the organism. Insanity can therefore be viewed as a form of global perturbation. The implication is that vitalist forces cannot be reduced to mechanically caused motions. Vitalism for Pinel was therefore the precondition for conceiving of insanity as illness caused by something other than organic dysfunction. As is well known, the implication for treatment for Pinel was his treatment moral, which was translated as moral treatment. This approach gave preference to ways of gentleness and minimised the use of restraint. Essentially, it involved the use of contrived situations, artifice and pious fraud. A variety of strategies were used to control difficult patients, including stern warnings, the manipulative use of food and privileges, and physical restraints, as well as various theatrical gestures designed to shock patients out of their morbid ways of thinking. There may be modern ethical questions about such treatments, but they focused on emotional factors, and such moral treatment is generally seen as arising out of Pinnell's conceptual understanding. To use his own words, physicians have allowed themselves to be confined within the fairy circle of anti-phlogisticism, and by that means to be diverted from the important management of the mind. Pinel's moral treatment moved psychiatry on from Galenism and Cartesianism. The second example I want to look at is Ernst von Feuchtesleben, who has been called a forgotten psychiatrist. His book, The Principles of Medical Psychology, was originally published in German in 1845, the same year as Wilhelm Griesinger's Mental Pathology and Therapeutics often seen as the origin of modern biomedical views. Although von Feuchtesleben praised Griesinger's book, he questioned whether mental disorders were always due only to disorders of the brain. Von Feuchtesleben proposed an integrated psychophysical perspective. In his own words, the notion mental disease must be deduced neither from the brain nor from the body, but from the relation of each to the other. This romantic theme of the total personality may have had vitalistic undertones. Nonetheless, like Pinel, he moved psychiatry on from needing to invoke the soul in the understanding of mental illness by defining the mind. For him, Mind is the meeting place of body and spirit, and has no seat. Specifically, he offered an integrated solution to the somatist, somaticist mentalist conflict, by avoiding the dilemma of whether the soul could become diseased. Somaticists, such as 